I giving him a, I gave him five. Five, man. Big time, man. He's shooting up now. Hmm? Already. He's gonna be like about six six, man. That works, man. Huh? Like six six, man. Yeah. That's a good. That's a good height. Coach Williams, Andre Williams, I mean, we go back, we go back, we, it's bigger than basketball. Um, it's not just basketball, that's one of my best friends. He brought me into coaching. That's gotta make sense to you guys. And you know, a lot of times it's that back guy. Year one, Angelo wasn't with me. Uh, came along year two, as a guy just hanging out in the building. He was a, um, actually a administrator aide. And I walked up to him and I said, hey man, you know anything about basketball? He said, I know a lot about it. I came out of college, I didn't want to do no coaching. I didn't want to coach no kids. I just got coached and I'm like, I don't think I can do this. I said, you want to help me coach? He said, sure. I was still playing semi-professionally and, you know, just kind of find myself, like, do I want to go overseas or do I, what do I want to do? He gave me the opportunity to just work with the kids and I saw that they were taken to what I was teaching them. I put my I put my assistants, I let them coach A, and then B, I put them in positions to understand what it means to be a head coach. We had some we had some great years of basketball where we had to really think and try to win and we, we just couldn't get over the hump. Uh, Angelo and I remember when we struggled uh, to get 10 wins. During those years, we had good teams. We had good players. We were competing. We just couldn't get over the hump. We would always finish fourth or fifth in the league and we couldn't get out the first round. Shortly thereafter, we went from 14 to 21 uh, season every year. And again, um, just to see where it is now, just to see how enthusiastic the um, Tinley Town, this uh, surrounding area is around this buzz of what's going on, is just phenomenal. When Dre decided to take another position, Coach Williams, your first year in the program, what you have in mind to bring the Knights back to, 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 to great heights? We want to change it from a team concept to a program. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, there's a couple of ingredients that you have to have. And one of the things is strong people surrounding you mm -hmm. to uh, help you to inspire kids to want to do better. At first I was like, ah, I don't know about this. Uh, is it my time? Am I ready for this? He handled the off-season operations, the training. He handled the summer leagues. He handled, um, you know, talking to parents in the off-season because I wanted to have him a, a complete understanding of what it's, uh, it's like to be a head coach. I went and talked to a few people and then came back to Dre and we discussed it and, you know, he said this is what he was going to go do and make sure that, you know, I got the head coaching position, um, and then it went from there. And everything he's got, he deserves. I thank him for the opportunity he gave me because he kind of jump-started my career and got me into coaching. I think he put the first seed in the ground to build the Wilson, Wilson basketball program. Hey, you can't lay the ball back up! It's weird playing against him, actually. You know, it's like, because I know the way he thinks, and I know he knows the way I think. You ain't built like that, young. I don't care. I'm from South East. You from the Wilk South East. Ref, come on, ref. The ref, just clean it up. It's no technical foul. Just have on the rim. Are you serious? Are, are we serious? My guy just went to the lane. You, you, you with the same foul. He lost, he lost the ball. My guy lost the ball to him, too. We got to go out. That's the matchup you want. That's the matchup you want. Go ahead, help. Moves. Attack, attack now. Hey, come on, Twan. You know, we talk almost every day still and about basketball, just about, you know, schemes and, you know, what people, what we think. And we go, you know, sit down and have a meal. And, uh, you know, our families our meet together and we talk. And it's just a big, it's, it's, it's a well, rounded friendship, so, you know, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Um, and, uh, you know, I wish him the best the rest of this season as well. Uh, Ricky Lindo, my guy, um, Ricky Lindo Jr. Yeah, 
Ricky Lindo came to us from Deal Middle School. Um, didn't really play over there. I played against Ricky like when he was trash, like at Deal in eighth grade. He was just soft. I said, okay, he needs a lot of development, but he's long, his arms are long, and he needs to develop. He was trash, but like over the years, I saw he got uh, bigger, he started dribbling the ball, he got more confident. I remember sitting down with Ricky's dad, kind of after I met him, and saying, hey, your son might have a chance. Let's put a plan together and see if it works. So I remember he played freshman basketball that year, and he did okay. His 10th grade year, um, I moved him up to varsity. I seen him transform into something that I didn't really think he was going to be. Well, Ricky was always one. He was the he was kind of the guy that was there, and he wasn't tall. He was six feet at best by 10th grade year, six one. He could shoot the ball really well. He was a really good shooter going into 10th grade, but. It wasn't enough for varsity, you know. I still had some guys, Isaiah Jennings and Freddie Harris, and those guys were um, juniors. Um, so Ricky really didn't play that much his 10th grade year. He was on the he was on the bench. Watching him, you know, just trying to get in the rotation, trying to, you know, help the team as much as he can. Wasn't really given the opportunity early off, but by the end of the season, he stepped up and played well. You know, we kept taking our hits, and we got to the end of the season. And we were, I remember we were in our last league game um, at Roosevelt. And, um, you know, it was, time, it was like it's time to make the, the, the change. You know, last couple games, I don't think it was the last game. And so I inserted him in and he played. He had like 28 points and he was just playing. Like we lost by 20, but he still had 28 points. At that point, he had grew to be about 6'4". Going into junior year, um, <laughs> he just kept growing. We sit down again, and Ricky's six, seven now. I'm like, wow, okay, we're growing. I mean, that year, that was his year. That was gonna be, the 11th grade year was gonna be the year, which was the year for him. Fast forward, senior year, um, it, was a, it was a big year for us, a uh, big year for him. By the time we got to the season, he was six, eight, about 199 pounds. The fact that he, he was staying with his, his diet was great. You work hard. And he showed that it was possible. You know, I allow my guys to do certain things. Just because he was the tallest guy don't mean he had to play center. Um, a lot of coaches do that to those type of guys. But the year before, he played on the wing at 6'7", and we had 6'1", and 6'1", at forward and center, because that's where they needed to be at the time. So he was able to play. He played the four that year for us, um, because we were smaller. And that was that would have been a, it was a four guard rotation with Allende at the point, Jay, Dominguez, and then Ricky. Turned out to be a great year. Um, for Ricky, you know, going into, you know, we won a DCIAA championship for the second time in a second time. We won it two in a row. And then we, um, we won the state championship. So I remember that last game and uh, sitting down with Ricky's parents and saying, hey, what are we going to do? You know, and made the decision to go to prep school. It was the best thing for him at the time. He was able to play AAU again. He ended up getting with uh, DC Premier. When he got on the circuit, he was just dunking on people. He had a really high level guys. I think the twins allowed him to do much more than he was able to show on other teams because he was, he didn't have to rebound as much, but he was a hell of a rebounder. And he, he was a defender. He was guarding the other team's best, best guys. And uh, he was long enough to do it. And so he impressed a lot of people. Maryland was around a lot because of the twins. I was telling Ricky, um, I was asking him, like, what schools do you like? We really like, and uh, he said Merlin. I seen him transform into a Merlin player. I felt like he fit the system. I remember it being the end of the summer, and they won that first championship, the UAA championship. You know, we were just talking, like, hey, you know, Maryland's interested. And then they came in and offered. Man, we came back home, took a visit, and loved it, and signed. And the next day, and and now the rest is history. Now he at Maryland doing his thing. He's doing a great job. He's in the rotation. Helping Maryland beat some big schools, Ohio State, Wisconsin. Just watching him just do what he can do. See with the ball. Lindo. He's got some work to do, but it's exciting to see a freshman, you know, really play as much as he is. You know, he, he changes the game defensively with his length and uh, his athleticism. I'm proud of him. 
because he always pushed me no matter what. Um, anything I was going through, he was always there for me. So, you know, I'm glad to see what he's doing. What he doing. He's got a bright upside, and uh, I'm excited to see, you know, that everything that we talked about in the beginning with his mom and dad and fighting through it, uh, adversity, that he was able to come out on top, and uh, he's still he's still doing his thing. So now he's a six nine and a half, and about two thirty five, and I mean he's still growing. He's still <laughs> going to get more, and and that's exciting to see. Senior night was a plus, man. The parents were able to send their kids off um, from their last home game. It was just amazing to see, you know, the amount of support that the kids had. Uh, yeah, I got a little emotional before I walked out, but my mother was like that, talking words with courage. I mean, Los, you know, that's my, that's my good man, man, you know. <laughs> I don't even got to explain too much, but, you know, he cool off the court, off the court. That's my man. Carl's done. Um, <laughs> it's my guy. Um, he he meant a lot to the program. Um, and he's had so many things happen to him, um, as you saw in different episodes. Fighting through adversity sometimes is really really hard. Saying night, there was a lot of emotions running through me. Time is going to be over sooner than you think, so you just got to make the most of that. That's what, that's what I tell myself. You know, Carlos is always, he's always a very smart kid, high GPA. He just was a glue guy. He just hit shots, he played defense, he could bring the ball up. And this year was, was special. You know, he was, he played football. And, you know, I told him that, you know, that's a lot of work, like to try to go play football for one year and try to get a scholarship and, you know, try to come back and play basketball as well. If, if you haven't been doing both sports the whole time, it's kind of hard to do that. And he did it. I don't feel like I was there enough. And when everything happened, when he lost his stepfather, when those things happen and they're around, it's hard to deal with. Um, I know firsthand um, and losing my mother. But after that conversation, it was amazing. He was an amazing kid after that. You know, he was on board with everything we were trying to do. And, you know, he was playing better. And that's what we wanted the whole time. So it, it just made me feel better that I was able to send him off um, at least with one more championship. You know, he walks out of here with four. <laughs> but that's it's not a bad resume. Um, and he's not done. Um, he's going to continue to do things and we'll, get, we'll continue to, you know, work with him. It was an overall good night. All the hard work paid off. It was a good night for my family, my mom, my dad, my sister. They was proud of me. Jay Heath, um, two-year guy. Um, known him since he was in middle school, always thought the world of him. And in middle school, he was just like, he was getting 50 points. And I'm like, this kid is special. And, you know, at that time, our program wasn't where it needed to be. Um, and I'm a firm believer in timing is, is everything. And if it's meant to be, it'll be. And so when we got back here to Wilson, it was, it was a blessing. And, um, you know, he helped lead that team to the city in the state championship by hitting big shots. And, uh, I mean, those shots were big. I mean, he hit some big shots down the stretch at St. John's, at Gonzaga. Um, even during the season, hit big shots and helped us win games. And leading into his senior year, man, he just, you know, when he committed, I think it took a burden off his shoulder. And uh, he was able to just play um, and transition from being a combo guard to handling the ball, being a dominant ball handler. And I think he did a really, really, really well job. And uh, that's my guy, man. Uh, can't wait to see him at Boston College. He's, um, he's going to be a dynamic player. And uh, I know so much more left to Jay. Like, it's going to be amazing to see these guys play at the highest level. And Julian McClurkin, four-year guy too. You know, came through the ranks freshman, played JV twice, you know, stuck with it. And... Um, you know, it just was one of those things that he was determined to make the team. He was determined to play. He's a really good kid. He's going to attend the uh, University of Louisville next year. And, you know, he's a stellar student athlete at the City of Palm. They had pick one student that would, could write about the school and tell them different things that people wouldn't know. And I had him write that in a, of a different dynamic that people aren't used to seeing uh, a kid do that. Like, 
fighting through adversity, and I don't even mean like stuff in the streets. I mean just, you know, I want to be this, and I want to be a basketball player, and you know, but is it realistic? And I think he, you know, he was he was excited to be part of the team, and he contributed a lot. Um, we left him when we had to go to City of Palms. They had they stayed and played against. Phelps and you know we only had five guys and he was the leader, him and Dimitri. Uh, and he kind of won that game for us. And uh, you know, I always appreciate him for that, for sticking through and being a four-year guy. Dimitri it was his first year. He was a football player. Um, but he told me beginning of the season, coach, I'm I'm gonna come out and make the team. Meet school too. Uh, he ain't really into basketball, he do his football thing, but he still like, you know what I'm saying? He still support everybody, motivate everybody. He showed up at trials, you know, and that day, the, that day that he came in the trials, he, he was determined. He hit shots, he made layups, and he played defense, and that's all I can ask for. It was very important for that to happen. I think he played a pivotal part in where we were at this year. My other one, Lamar Hutchinson. Same thing, been here and saw where we were when we first, when I first started and kind of had a trial and error, you know, with the ups and downs, and he's just a fun kid. like. And he, he gets down on himself sometimes because he's not playing the way he thinks he should. Um, but he's just a great kid, man. He hits shots. He hits a lot of shots. And, um, you know, he worked on his ball handling. And, and, you know, going down the stretch, it was very important that he was a part of this group um, because he brought a lot to the team. And he still has way more to go. Like, he's still, you know, young enough to where his body's still growing and his, his IQ is getting better. And so I can't wait to see these guys play on the next level. My senior night, you know, it meant a lot. Um, especially just like me remember, I was just in ninth grade and it all just flew by. People was just in my ear, it was in my ear just saying time flying, like time won't fly. So cherish it and all that. So I think I cherished every moment I've been. The twins, <laughs> you know, first year guys, but you could tell that going away where they went to Montverde Academy helped them grow a little bit, a lot. Uh, I would say a lot, and um, maturity-wise, and them becoming leaders. But those guys, I wouldn't trade them for the world, man. They are they have a bright future at Maryland. I think it's very important for them to, to, to be ready to play. I think they have. They've slimmed down a lot. Um, their bodies are right. They, I mean, they, had to, they were playing whole games, except league games. I think that's what they needed, you know, for them to be allowed to do a little bit of what they haven't been used to. I appreciate those guys coming in and helping the program. Um, senior night was is always special to me. You know, it's something that we'll continue to do. On the next episode of Run This Town. He's gotta go. I know he didn't say nothing. But we decided for them to win three championships in a row. Fire attack.